just off Ebite Island at Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands are the wrecks of two E-13A seaplanes. Designed in 1937 by the Aichi Aircraft Company, the E-13A was numerically the most important of all Japanese float seaplanes during World War II. It had a wingspan of just over 47 feet and a length of 37 feet, and it was powered by a 1,060 horsepower engine. The Jake carried a crew of three in a tandem enclosed cockpit. With a range of nearly 1,300 miles and an endurance in the air of nearly 15 hours, it was ideal for long-range patrol and reconnaissance missions over the vast expanses of the Pacific. The plane was accepted for service by the Japanese Navy in December 1940, and it was given the designation Navy Type Zero Reconnaissance Seaplane. The term seaplane comes from the fact that these types of planes are equipped with floats to allow the plane to operate from water. The names of Japanese aircraft are often hard to pronounce by Allied air crews, so in early 1942, a system was created by Allied intelligence to assign names to the various types of Japanese aircraft that were encountered during the war. Since the E-13A was a reconnaissance seaplane, it was given a male name, and the name chosen for the E-13A series was Jake. When Jakes operated from ships, catapults were used to get the aircraft into the air. When the plane was done with its mission, it would land alongside the ship and a crane would hoist the plane back on board. Wherever Jakes operated from island bases, seaplane ramps were usually built for getting the aircraft into and out of the water. Often the plane would simply be moored at the water's edge, ready for takeoff at a moment's notice. At land bases, the plane sat on a trolley when not in the water, and the trolley was also used when needed to move the aircraft into and out of the water. When the Marshall Islands were mandated to Japan in the early 1920s following Germany's defeat in the First World War, a civilian administration was put in charge. In the late 1930s, the Japanese military took over and began fortifying several of the atolls. As part of the military buildup, they constructed a seaplane base at Ebai Island. This wartime photo of Ebai shows two seaplane ramps jutting out into the lagoon. The larger ramp was for aircraft such as the H-6K Mavis, and the smaller ramp was for seaplanes such as the Jake. The larger of the two ramps is still visible today, but the smaller ramp no longer exists. On December 4, 1943, a major raid by U.S. carrier-based aircraft took place at Kwajalein Atoll. Targets included shipping as well as shore installations. This was a softening up raid in preparation for Operation Flintlock, which was scheduled for the following month. This photo taken during the attack shows a number of Jakes more just offshore of Ebay. Another photo taken during the attack shows seven more on the seaplane apron. Due to conflicting claims by American pilots, it is not known for certain exactly how many Jakes were destroyed in the attack on December 4th or how many were destroyed the following month during Operation Flintlock. Today, there are two Jake wrecks which can be visited by divers. These wrecks are referred to as Jake 1 and Jake 2. The Jake 1 wreck is just over 800 feet west of the Ebay cargo pier. It was found in mid-1998 and it lies upside down at a depth of 130 feet. The tail section of the plane is missing and the rest of the fuselage also shows evidence of heavy battle damage caused by strafing. The Jake was equipped with an internal bomb bay on the underside of the plane between the floats. In addition, there were external mounting points on both sides of the bay. This gave the plane a maximum ordnance load of 551 pounds of bombs or depth charges for bombing missions or anti-submarine patrols. The bomb bay is open but empty, and a bomb is still attached to an external shackle on the right wing. The floats were attached to a pair of support struts which were further braced by wires, and the struts are still present on the left wing. One of the two floats lies about 50 feet away from the front of the plane and is heavily damaged. The other float has never been found. Since the plane lies upside down, the entire cockpit section is buried and cannot be seen. The Jake 2 wreck lies upright just over half a mile due west of the cargo pier. It was found in mid-2009, 
and since it is upright, this Jake is the most scenic and the more commonly dived of the two. After being strafed and set on fire, the plane drifted out as it was burning before finally sinking, which is why this one lies so far offshore from Ebi. The pilot's cockpit is open and easy to explore, and several of the gauges on the instrument panel are still there. The fuselage shows evidence of heavy fire damage, especially around the remains of the center cockpit, but there's still much that can be seen. Despite the heavy damage, jumbled equipment and the seat can still be seen in the gunner's cockpit. The Jake was equipped with a single 7.7mm machine gun on a flexible mount for the rear gunner. The ammunition was fed from removable drums attached to the top of the gun. The gun is still present on this Jake, and spare ammo drums are still present in the gunner's cockpit as well. Exploring the area around and under the plane, remnants of the tail are seen lying in the sand on the left side next to the fuselage. One of the floats is wedged underneath, and like the second float on the Jake 1 wreck, the other float for this plane has never been found. The wrecks of around 20 Jakes have been discovered around the Pacific near former Japanese bases, including these two off Ebay. Of the 1,418 that were built, the only remnants that survive above water today are the partial remains of two Jakes at museums in Japan. Having two Jake wrecks off Ebay provides a great opportunity for divers at Kwajalein Atoll to get a look at the remains of two of Japan's premier naval reconnaissance aircraft of World War II.